Hi. Hey. <laughs> How are you? I'm well. I see today you came with weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> the lip, red lipstick was clearly to knock me out. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you should be firm on that. <laughs> Nueda, <yeah>? be steady. <laughs> be steady. How are you? I am blessed. I am blessed and highly favored. Amen. I am Amen. blessed and highly favored. Amen. How are you? <sighs> I am well. Glory. I am well. Um... I know I have a sense of where I'm well and I'm not well. And there, there's a dimension of physical wellness. Mm -hmm. There's a dimension of uh, spiritual wellness. I think there's even a dimension of emotional wellness. And if I was to imagine there would be more wellnesses. And uh, I must say, I feel well on many levels right now. Glory, glory, glory. I'm glad. Yeah. Considering the last 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> what transpired? It's actually been since, it's been since Friday. Yeah. Friday? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's been since Friday. Yeah. Um, been crazy. Yeah. It's like I, I felt like like I was being hunted down. Mm. <laughs> I think hunting is the most appropriate yeah. way to describe it. Yeah. From the moment I got up and my feet hit the ground on yeah. the floor. Ah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was everything that was happening was just going wrong. Yeah, yeah. Everything just seemed, all the little buttons and the yeah. triggers were just like, like someone was just pushing little buttons. <sighs> and just when I th thought I had conquered it, mm -hmm. I think I technically conquered it on Friday. Quite a number of things happened on Friday. Um, mm -hmm. Some experiences I do not care to repeat. <laughs> I'll skip some of them because they involve other people. Um, but there was a particular point in the day that I was getting really, really frustrated. One of the pluses, let me start with the plus before I go into the negative things. Um, because I was held up in one, one particular location for a very long time, I was able to do my Bible study mm. in one city. That was a plus. <laughs> and maybe that's actually what even made it easier for me to go through the day, mm. you know, in a very calm way, despite everything that was being thrown at me. I had an event on Saturday, so Friday was one of those days when I was expecting the, the, the dress that I thought I should wear, yeah. that I felt I should wear, uh, was going to be delivered yeah. on Friday. The delivery took longer than it should have, yeah. and the gentleman, the courier was on its way for a very long time. That yeah. sort of began to get me, uncom get me uncomfortable. Um, I spent a significant time in the salon. <laughs> a few things went off here and there, but in my heart, I think it was the Holy Spirit. They just told me, let it go. It's, mm. it's, not, it's not a big deal. You can fix that. So I went for the dress. The dress is delivered. I'm rushing home because I know I left people at home who need to break their fast, mm. along, of course, with myself. And I decide in my infinite wisdom, I'm going to pass by a supermarket and pick up stuff for breakfast the next day. And I get blocked in. Mm. So I am still trying to keep calm. After a few minutes, I speak to the security guard. I ask the security guard, do you know where these people are? He says, no, they're in the supermarket. Please give it a bit of time. So I sit for another 15 minutes. Um, I go back to the guard. I think that the, actually, I actually didn't even have to go back to the guard. So the guard goes back in and tells me they are coming. Mm. And I wait, and I wait, and I wait. Mm. At this point, I couldn't wait in the car anymore. The car was feeling a bit too small for me. That is how I was feeling. I'm like, let me step out and get some fresh air. Because now I was beginning to, 
I was actually beginning to get very upset. So I get out, stand beside the car, and the people who had blocked me walk out of the supermarket. The car was right behind me, oblivious of the fact that this person has been waiting mm. and that the security guard had actually probably told them, huh? The lovely ladies get into their car and drive off. I have never been more incensed in my life. I was like, who does that? Mm. Like, at least apologize. Mm. Show some, you know, consideration for this human being. You know, you had been calling me. Where are you? How far have you reached? Zoe was calling me, asking for guidance, and I was really, really beginning to lose it. Eventually, I drive, and I get home, and yeah, check out the dress. There are a few issues here and there. And we decide, okay, we're going to send the dress back for dry cleaning early in the morning. Yeah. Not a very wise move, <laughs> right? on account of everything that had happened. Yeah, so the dress gets picked up on time, early in the morning, first thing in the morning. I think I was even doing my Bible study. The border guy comes, picks up the dress. It's taken for dry cleaning into town. And it comes back on time. Mm. And it had been sorted. And then in my infinite wisdom, or lack thereof, I don't know what came over me. And I decide, let me iron these trees, mm. which had just been dry cleaned. So I start steam iron. Three o'clock, start ironing the dress. Iron the front, no, iron the back and it's cover. Flip the dress, I decide let me first go to the bathroom. I don't know what, I like multitasking and you keep talking to me about, okay, I hadn't told you, I, like, I hadn't, I hadn't explained <laughs> that. That's that story I didn't know about. I left that story out. <laughs> I left that story out. So I ironed the back of the dress and it's fine. So the heat was okay. I didn't turn up the heat or anything. There was water in the iron, in the iron box. The heat was the right temperature. Yeah. I decide to go into the bathroom. I don't know to do what, because I definitely wasn't using the bathroom. Yeah. Chances are something came over me and I said, let me first go and look at myself in the mirror. <laughs> Some weird thing like that. I come back and it doesn't occur to me to first check the temperature again because I had just used the iron. Yeah. I place it on the dress and it burns the dress. <laughs> so now I'm thinking, wow. I have to be at the makeup place at 4.30. It is 3. I have nothing to wear. But I think what was even worse is that the, something around the dress had been a source of an altercation between you and I the day before. When you asked... Just in case, let, let's just look through a wardrobe again, just in case there's something. Yeah. Let's, let's see if there's another, another alternative. Yeah. But because in my mind, I'd already ordered for a new dress yeah. and had it custom made, because it's what I wanted to wear to the Vine Awards, I'm like, but you've even seen my clothes before. Yeah. I mean, we go through these clothes every time I need to wear something. We go through them. So there's nothing new in my closet. <laughs> That you okay now now I'm saying I must it very say nicely. You're in that polite. No, I wasn't that polite. I was actually very it was very dishonorable. But I was now we had this conversation on the back of the day I just described. Yeah. yeah. I was exhausted on the, on the eve. So Friday had been going wrong. Everything had been going wrong. So I come home, I am tired, I have work to do, I have so many things, I want to rest. And you're telling me, let's go through the closet. I'm thinking. But we have looked at this. We look at these clothes every single time. Yeah. And what is ironic, even as I say that now, is that even when I'm going to wear clothes that I've worn before, I still try them on before yeah. just to get a sense of how they make me feel. But in that moment, it felt like a disturbance. Yeah. So I wasn't very kind to you. And I'm really sorry. I wasn't very kind to you. And um, so fast forward, clearly you were being led. I couldn't have known that. I could not have perceived it. I should learn to be a bit more. <laughs> Considering the incidents we've had, eh? by now surely I should know better that, uh, that my husband is, is quite something. So fast forward, the dress gets burnt, and I'm thinking, oh my God, this is probably why my husband was saying, let's look through your closet and figure out what, <laughs> what other option you might have to wear. And of course, the first thing I do is call you and... 
you need to know what went through my mind. Please share. <laughs> I'm driving home. Um, then I hear, you won't believe this, I burnt the dress. And I'm thinking to myself, now you're going to do the very thing you gave me hell for telling you to do the night before. And you're going to do it on short notice with a gun to your head. And the difference now, you're putting me on under pressure yeah. over Something your, that... your refusal to heed good counsel. Because it was good counsel. Yeah, it actually was. It was my it dress. Was, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was you going to wear it. And I was really just trying to uh, offer. It was actually a loving thing a loving husband would do. Right? Because if, you, if your dress doesn't turn out well, the mood affects all of us. Right? So now I'm here. I remember saying, you know, those things where you just say musasi. <laughs> because like no Felix forget who's right who's wrong Musasiri. now it's not a time to gloat and I remember thinking to myself don't even mention it you know it's those, those moments where you're like here we go I told you like you know what don't remind how you told us so. just be quiet so I just stayed worshipping and I'm in the kite and I'm asked, um, the Holy Spirit, what should she wear? <laughs> and uh, I, I just saw one dress, which actually I had never worn. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, that is it. I was like, I won't tell her. I'll just, until I get home, I'll let her think through her process and everything. That's when I get into the house, the first thing I tell you, try the other dress on. And that was it. Thank you for being, thank you for not rubbing it in. It's, it's not, not in your easy. character at it's all, but easy. I know you could have yeah. rebuked me. Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> but thank you. And thank the worst thing is it when the fact that you made me feel terrible for a thing that in hindsight was actually very spot on. You made me so feel so terrible. You even went to bed without talking to me. You went to bed immediately. Right, I did, and and it's. Uh, I did, <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I emphasize this because I imagine <coughs> there are a number of men who have encountered similar experiences, and uh, I uh, I amplify it not for the sake of uh, pushing you, throwing you under the bus, but for the sake of uh, people realizing that <sighs> these things are common but also to realize that they have to be overcome, right? That's true. Because there's a, when I started to learn about headship in a home, I also had to understand that I, I am the priest of my home, right? And when you start to see the way priests operated, uh, priests gave instruction as they were led to kings in lands, and when kings disobeyed the instructions of the priests, calamity striked, right? And that obedience to the instruction of the priest. So to imagine uh, he's the priest in the home, has a leading. It's not a command. It's not a, uh, it wasn't out of bad blood. It was a very humble demeanor. And I remember your, when, you, when you responded the way you responded, the summary of it is you shut me up. I couldn't say anymore. And I remember feeling to myself, I was like, okay, is she aware of what she has done? You see, there's a Luganda proverb that says, Akanafa te kaulira ngombe. Right? that that that's going to die does not hear the horn. And I remember a while back meditating on that proverb, that before you die, your hearing is cut off first. Mm. Because if a car is coming, 
And they toot the horn. And they toot the horn. If you hear, you get out. But if your hearing is off, that can mean not even be the right example. Think of a train, because the train doesn't have the luxury of stopping. Mm-hmm. So if you don't hear, you may actually fall. And uh, it was very interesting to me, the part of, I've lived my life in such a way that you have to be open to hearing. I've learned to be so sensitive to the voice and leading of God, the leading of the Spirit. There's a story in the Bible of Elijah, and uh, I think he had run away into some caves, and uh, there's a storm that came, and he said God was not in it, and a strong sound, and da-da-da-da. But then someone says, there's still, there's something like a still voice, and that's where it was. That brought me to the awareness of the still voice, and because of the stillness of the voice, I am very, very attentive. Very, very attentive. So when someone speaks, you know, when someone speaks and says something, sometimes they're th- what they're saying may not make sense to you. Now, that's, the principle is they may be wrong. But just as they may be wrong, they, they may be right. be right. Now, wisdom says, consider. Receive, then inquire of God. Receive. But don't be the one who cuts out the message. That's, that's, um... And uh, a thing to add to that, there's a friend of mine called Alan. And uh, years back, there's uh, something we had in common. Uh, uh, he told me a story about a Volvo advert. So Volvo had this advert, and at the end of the advert, there was just one call to action. Consider Volvo. They didn't say buy a Volvo. They didn't say Volvo is the best car. They just said, consider Volvo. And it became our go-to thing, that in case someone has a different opinion, that question is, consider Volvo. It doesn't mean that is the right one. No, just consider. When you understand what it takes to be guided into our destinies, right? Now think about the lady, the widow, to whom Elijah, Elijah was, sent. was sent. The lady just had a little bread for her, her and her son to eat and die. Now the prophet of God comes and says, give me the bread you have. She says, this is all I have. We're going to eat it and die. Thank you. Now, if you're not considered, because really it's quite tricky. What if it's just a normal hungry fellow going to eat your last slice? But if he's a man of God? And if you don't have that openness. So that's where the part came in when you shut me up. And I remember saying, you know what, I need to let my wife in on this insight. Amore is a big believer in uh, people seeing the light. So I'm like, sweetheart, did you notice uh, you shut me up? (laughs) Guess what happened? I shut you up again. (laughs) (laughs) You shut me up again. I was like, okay. I think it was your timing, really. I was like, uh, here, <laughs> here there's a uh, no I'm go. laughing, but it's not even funny. Yes, mm. and I decided to keep quiet. Ironically, this is, this is a first stretch. Jesus told Peter, before the cock, what, crows? Thrice. Thrice. No, before the cock thro- crows, yeah. they'll have denied me. Thrice. thrice. Now Peter's like, God, ah, my Lord, how can, how can that happen? Ah, 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 And uh, as Peter is going there, uh, some kid sees him, like, ah, oh, weren't you with that guy? He's like, no, I wasn't. But what, what I wanted to connect in, it wasn't once. That when Peter was done with it, he dealt with that. Oh, that's what my Lord said. 
It's a long stretch, but the idea of shutting me up twice. I'd, um, <laughs> but, but go on, go on. <laughs> As you were speaking, I thought about a couple of things. Yeah. Talked about the priesthood yeah. in the home. Yeah. And the role of the, and you talked about the role of um, priests. Yeah. Not priests, the role of, uh, I think it's through kings, yeah. would give them counsel and stuff. So there's something that, I think, something that happens in the context of marriage. Yeah. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes in some moments, there can be that brief moment, sometimes not so brief, of familiarity. Yeah. That familiarity can actually make you dismiss yeah. Counsel, even from your husband, who is who is the priest yeah. <laughs> in yeah. the home, and I think that it's not just familiarity; it's also noise. Mm -hmm. Because in that moment, you're not able to recognize, and this is what I find so ironic, yeah. especially in our context. I think I've said this before: before we were married. Yeah. If you said, go jump in the lake. <laughs> For me, all I used to hear was God's voice. That's all I actually used to hear. You would speak and it wouldn't be you speaking. Yeah. So whatever you told me, whatever you said, I would consider yeah. and act. <clears throat> and it was very, very valuable. Yeah. So what is it about the space of marriage yeah. that suddenly flips things? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I talked about familiarity. Yeah. You can become so familiar with someone, yeah. with your spouse, that you actually forget one, their place, yeah. but also the fact that God does speak through them yeah. to you. Yeah. At least that's been my, ex yeah. my experience about familiarity. But then there's also, and you talked about, you, you were talking about, giving the example of um, <clears throat> through the Uganda proverb yeah. about that which will die hmm. ceases to hear that's the hmm. paraphrasing um, and um, it's not so much that you cease to hear hmm. it's that you're hearing other things hmm. that you're hearing a lot of noise hmm. you're actually hearing noise and that noise drowns out that still small hmm. voice hmm. Because if I hadn't had all this noise in my head that started yeah. in yeah. the morning, and now I can only say this in hindsight, yeah. by the way. Yeah. If I hadn't had all the noise that was going on in my head yeah. since morning, yeah. when I came home at night and you suggested, let's take a look at your other clothes, mm. I would have thought there's a good reason. Yeah. Because it's not like you. Yeah. You already know a new outfit has been made. Yeah. So what is the purpose yeah. of looking through the closet? If there yeah. was anything to see in the closet, yeah. we would have done that before making the new outfit. Yeah. Okay, if there's anything that I wanted to wear that was in the closet, yeah. we would have done that before yeah. making the new outfit. But because I had, I wasn't present. Yeah. I actually wasn't present. Yeah. And that's why I behaved the way I behaved. Not justifiable. Yeah. That's why I didn't even notice that I'd actually shut you up until you asked me that question. And you still didn't notice? No. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, honestly, I was in my head. Yeah. And I, I was carrying so many things. Yeah. I was really, really carrying so many things. And that is, that is the dilemma. When we overly, let me put it this way. It is important for us to be in a constant state of emptiness. Yeah. Emptiness in the sense that, because you don't know what God wants to say at, to you yeah. at what time. Yeah. Now, if you're not empty yeah. and you have so many things going on in your mind, yeah. so many voices going on in your head over so many things, you will not hear that still small voice. Yeah. Yeah. And it will come in different ways. Yeah. It could come through your child. Yeah. It could yeah. come through your husband. Or your wife. It, or your wife. Yeah. It could also come through... 
someone else in your home yeah. even the helper yes yeah. but you just will not yeah. recognize it yeah. and you will not hear it and the moment will come and go and perhaps you're actually being warned about that, something else it's an interesting story mm. years back i had an office at saplo kagwa road and uh, one time we go to a certain petrol station in the neighborhood and the petrol station like uh, i think the the shop area had been covered with old newspapers mm-hmm. and uh, <coughs> there were, it was a bouquet de paper and the heading said uh stacy yaisinganyiza no mukisa i think it was the guy who was talking about the lady who had walked on mm. and the, the translation is stacy had luck or fa- luck or favor just no yaisinganyiza yaising as in they passed by each they other passed by each other <laughs> and eh pass by each other so stays you on the one side the luck, blessing the blessing yes. they quickly swiftly yes. passed by each other now what 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 that was sort of saying it intrigued us a lot it was the subject of meditation for a minute that it's the idea that you can drive the blessing you desire you can go past it and not even recognize because it because you're not present that's why the bible says that i came I was thirsty you didn't give me you something didn't to, give drink. Me to drink. Yeah, like when were you but thirsty? It's because you're not present. Doctor you see the Lord had come. Someone shared a story one time of uh I don't know if it's a fictitious story, it sounds fictitious, but the principle is powerful. And they said this lady had asked the Lord to visit her. And so she prepared very well for the Lord's visitation and as she was waiting some mad guy showed up and she was rather disturbed i've just organized for my lord <laughs> and this chap is coming to me so guys before the lord comes <laughs> i don't know if she gave her, she gave him food from the side away from her table i don't know but eventually the mad guy left <laughs> and later she waited for her lord who never showed because he had already come and she said my lord i waited you didn't come I said i was there said i did i did and this is very powerful because it takes us to a story of the young lady who joined our family our household <laughs> uh when she came in she has to help us with the chores but remember revelation that this young lady is coming in your home because of economic situation that may be the present part so she's known she's also a child of the most high god now there's a tendency where human beings allow their financial position to blind them that that's not how the weight of the spirit that's how th- things in the spirit are not ranked on money yeah there is someone driving a benz today but they are at the bottom in the spirit they actually not even worthy to stand in certain places the glory they have is the glory of carnal men right and we said no no we shall bring her in as one in the family and there'd been a tradition where our daughter calls the ladies who come to help us auntie and we meditated on this saying this one we won't she won't call her auntie she will call her by her first name because if she had a sister she would call her sister by her first name yeah and what i'm going at is saying about the person who walked past their blessing because if you do not see if you're not present to see you may not see the way god sees mm. just because someone came into your household as one doing chores you see them as one who's at the bottom but that person may be more weight in the spirit than even your children that's true that person may be more weight in the spirit than even your entire household that person may carry the blessing into your home that is so true but for the blindness and the carnality of men 
you can miss that revelation. And we can bear witness that this lady has been a blessing. I, uh, I asked her before I came, I was like, is it okay if I use your testimony on our podcast? I said it was okay. Because I'm a man of faith. I live a life of faith. Faith is my other name. <laughs> right? But to see someone with such a naivety of faith, I call it naive because it's quite, it's quite someone who takes God so literally. I thought I trusted God, but I'm blown away by her relation to God. Her relation to God is a ministration unto itself. Yeah. And one experience as such was, what was the first experience? The first experience was her first fruit. Her first fruit, <laughs> yes, yes. Her first fruit. So this young lady paid a small amount of money. Now, at the moment she's paid, they had debts at home. Yeah. And she was supposed to contribute. She gets her money and said, I have to take my first fruit. Now, what was ironic at that time, her phone was broken. And that money would help with her phone. So she had her phone that's broken. She had bills at home that needed her help. And she took the money to church. Now, I was blown away. Amid is her need. She was so diligent with her first fruit, saying it is from God. And it wasn't a religious thing. It was actually so joyful. And, and that's the power I want to go at. It wasn't it just so that no more people who are religious. Joyfully. And the way I saw it was when she got a salary increment. She gave a testimony, as a culture is nowadays of testifying over lunch at home. She gave a testimony that blew my mind. She's saying, I thank God that he increased my tithe. Yeah. Ah. It, was, it was quite... People thank God that they increased their salaries. She thanked God that he increased her tithe. It was I, I, the recognition I, that first and foremost, it is about God. How can tithe be the first thing you're seeing on your increment? I suppose when you're kingdom-minded. <laughs> but enough to testify about it. Yeah. But now, this is where it gets interesting. She, she wanted a blender. And she only had half the money. And she was like, you know what? I can't buy the blender. So she took the money she had and sold it in church. Now, I could, I could see the pattern. I've seen that pattern before. And I think I've shared that story. Of going to church and you only have 20,000 and you're feeling broke. And then decide to put the man, money in church in the offertory basket. For me, it was always to remind myself to not believe that report that I lack. Mm. Because now another person says, okay, I have this car money, now let me start saving. Mm. That's the way of the world, which is wisdom to the world. And I cannot banish it. <laughs> and that's why these things are about as far as your eye can see. It is not about tradition. It's not about religion. It's about as far as your eye can see. For someone's eye tells them, let me save. When the next money I get, I'll top up. This is what blows our mind. I wake up doing my research and I find out plastic has toxins that are not good for us. So I decided to get rid of all plastic in our house, in our kitchen, in your kitchen. Mm, I remember that exercise because they, because they had one. <laughs> I realized even the blender was plastic. Yeah. I said, like, no, it has to go. And there you are, you're like, you know what? She needs the blender. I'll give her the blender. She gets the blender. Little did we know she had actually sold for the blender. Mm. Now, you could look at some of those things and you're like, yeah, this may be just mere coincidences. But then she comes, she says she wants an iPhone. <laughs> Even I was challenged. <laughs> I was like, I don't think we pay you that much. <laughs> huh? 
But her argument was, I had an iPhone, and I you have had an, an iPhone, iPhone. and the family, family value is excellent. So she needs she, to be congruent. So she would like an iPhone, ah. and she's believing God for an iPhone. And she had the hundred k. I was like, okay, this is a an so interesting one. A challenge. Cut a long story short, she comes back. I got an iPhone XR. I, I, I was wondering, I hope they didn't give her these Chinese iPhones. I checked the iPhone, it was genuine. It was legit. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I've been humbled. You see that still voice? Mm. I am not blind to being able to learn. Because why that is powerful, <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to get a certain car. Mm. But the car cost a hundred million shillings. Mm, I remember. Now, <laughs> a part of me was like, ah, Felix. And of God, where's your faith? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, Felix, you believe God, but truly, really, you don't need that. It, it, yeah, it's not something Because really, really, it's a part, need. you don't need that. Yes, you can believe, but do you need it? But I come to this young lady. The iPhone was such a big deal. Was simply the, iPhone, out the of equivalent, reach. the iPhone to her was the equivalent of I don't the, know. a sort of, Maybe. of uh, an idea that yeah. like to you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Felix, do you have that same faith? But also, um, what, what, what challenges me, because for me, it's a subject of meditation, is sh- you would imagine that you go to God with things that have. Uh, great importance than an iPhone. But how much when you imagine that that's the nature of the Father? But also if there's a demonstration towards things like that, then how much more things that are of basic necessity of which he desires for you? And now that is also, I think, was a powerful ministration on your side as well. <laughs> May I talk about our journey with finances? Yes, but, before, you but no, 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 no. You're going to talk. You, you, please don't lose your thought about our okay. journey with finances. Something I wanted to speak about in the context of faith, yeah. in the context of being present, not present mentally, but physically, but also the idea of believing in something that is not necessarily rooted in truth. Hmm. And this is <clears throat> taken from the story, and also timing. Yeah. And being in a certain place. Yeah. It's a story of the man who had been invalid yeah. for 38 years. And every single day, he would be at the pool of Bethesda. Yeah. Because the belief, the religious belief at that time, was that if the water was stirred a bit, and you're the first person to get in, you would be healed. I actually don't think it was a belief. I actually think it was a fact. Okay, Fact. Belief fact. But you see, it wasn't the water that really healed. Okay, let's let everyone get into that debate. So, the fact that he was there consistently waiting, except because of his state, yeah. he needed someone to set him in. Yeah. Now, in the process of, there was never anyone to yeah. carry him and put him in the water. So, the able-bodied people would always come first, yeah. get into the water, because you had to get in first yeah. and possibly find their healing. Yeah. But he was there consistently waiting. If he had left, the day Jesus came to the pool of Bethesda, Mm. he would not. Mm. If he had left, he would not have found his healing. And when Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? The man says, I'll paraphrase, I do, but there is no one to lower me into the pool. So I can imagine if he were in the modern day times, yeah. his shock to realize that his healing did not even come by him getting into the pool. Yeah. It was just Jesus saying, take your mat and walk. Yeah. Yeah. But the faith, what manner of man yeah. that has been invalid yeah. for 38 years, who has been waiting for someone to carry him and lift him into the water, yeah. actually gets up on his feet, yeah. 
when a man tells him, take your mat and walk, mm -hmm. unless there is actually so much faith in this person. He did not even stop to question, but did you not hear what I said? I'd be waiting for someone to carry me and put me in the water. The man who had the faith to stay by the pool. Every that single law, day. That takes faith. Now that says something. Yeah. Sometimes we give up mm. because we have been by some pool yeah. for way too yeah. long. Yeah. And we might even say, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I have been here. <laughs> I have waited. I have believed. Yes. And yes. no one, there is no yeah. one to help yeah. me. Yeah. I have no helper. Yeah. Yeah. So in my mind, yeah. it's a couple of things. Yeah. I have waited. Lord, I have waited. Yeah. Yeah. But also, there is no one. Yeah. And for me, that is, for lack of a better phrase, my truth. Yeah, yeah. But by the grace of God, yeah. we still stay. And some people have walked away from the pool. Yeah. Whatever the pool is represents in different yeah. people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. Some people have walked away from the pool yeah. because they have been coming every single day yeah. and there is no one to help. Some people have felt so alone because... Perhaps their destiny helpers, maybe by some reason, yeah. the people who were meant to help them yeah. have not responded yeah. because we know that God's blessings come to man yeah. or to men through men. Yeah. And maybe the people that ought to have helped you yeah. or helped me have not heeded the call of God. Yeah. Maybe they have not heard that still small voice yeah. or maybe that voice has spoken, but yeah. they have dismissed it. Yeah. And there's someone who's been at a pool way too long yeah, yeah. and they have given up. Yeah. But there's also someone who has stayed yeah. and they are waiting yeah. for that moment when maybe there shall be a good Samaritan who shall lift them and put them in the pool. Yeah. Only for them to realize you don't even need the pool. Just take your mat yeah. and walk. And your faith, not in faith, yeah. but your faith in God, is what will bring your deliverance and your healing. But the question is, how long are you going to wait? Yeah. How long are you willing to sit it out? Yeah. And are you willing to sit it out because you are so desperate to be taken away from that space, to be yeah. healed, to walk into that thing that you'll be living for? Yeah. Or are you going to wait because you trust in God? You consider him faith. And that in his time... He makes all things beautiful, not in your time, but in his time. And that brings me to something I, I was reflecting on. It's quite interesting as we, are, as, as we are moving in these conversations. Sometimes you feel the sub subject of your meditation coming back from another person, and then you know that's a cue. And... This morning I was reflecting before I came here. There's a gentleman who told me he started this business and uh, that I mentioned in the podcast that with faith things work. And I felt a necessity to clarify faith because the subject of faith, some people tend to think of faith as a magic wand. Mm -hmm. Some people... Think about faith as this thing you come and slap on a mat and do that. But also faith is quite dimensional. There's the faith of encouragement. There's a faith of encouragement that even when I have uh, something before me that is scary, even before God has come to deliver, I confess, I speak a certain way, I speak in faith for my own encouragement. Mm -hmm. even if it doesn't go I speak in faith for my own encouragement there's a part of faith that is for my encouragement yeah. but now there's the place of faith in God now I have my definition of faith I didn't get it from anyone and it's how I've walked that faith is confidence in the power, power of, of God. God and if it on it well, you see some people they say, by faith, this thing is going to move. 
For me, my faith puts me in waiting. Linda Yesu, Linda Yesu, Yali Namani, Agayamba, Avakoye, Linda Yesu. You see, I've learned when I went on the floor, I didn't do anything. I wasn't saying I'm going to get a job. I wasn't even asking for jobs. I wasn't even looking for opportunities. I was just waiting. And I hope someone here, as it doesn't take it as a religion, that now you have to wait. It's not dogma. It's not dogma. Uh, and it's about, for me, I was like, I'm going to wait on God. But, the, but in my spirit, I was persuaded that it will show up. That's a place of my faith. My faith was the persuasion in whom I had believed. So your faith was in whom you believed yes. and not necessarily. Yes. That's what I call yes. not having faith in faith. Exactly. Sometimes you put our faith in faith that, God, I have really believed. How, how come it's not yes. working? Yes. Now, there's no way my faith cannot work. Because God is able to exceedingly, exceedingly abundantly. Yes. Oh, that which we're I've had witnesses in the Bible, in the stories of men, of how God has been faithful. So I don't have any doubt whatsoever. So if someone tells me, is there anything my God cannot do? I'll tell you nothing he can't do. But don't think just because God can do everything, that every stubborn fact in your life is just going to go. And that's what brought me to the realization that faith is a journey, a process. The journey to deliverance, whatever you believe in God for, is a realm you need deliverance in. Mm. There's someone dealing with poverty today. But that God may lead that person into acquiring a skill. God may lead that person to work for someone else for free. And that's still the part of God's plan for your deliverance. See, people tend to think in terms of magic and miracles. Mm -hmm. I believe in miracles because miracles I believe in God. <laughs> right? But I don't relate with faith as a miracle thing. I know faith as a, as a tool that brings results. You see, some things are not in need of a miracle. There's someone who has an incurable disease. Now that is a miracle. Mm -hmm. But there's someone who has a condition. They just go get the right medication. medication. That's really, you don't need to exercise your faith on that one. It can be done. But show me a person who the doctor said there's no cure. Now I'll tell you where I'll stand with you for that miracle. But there's a place where someone has no money because you have no skill. Or maybe the skill you have is of olden times. Yeah. It cannot fetch a decent wage. Right? I came to realize that the story of the children of Israel from Egypt is a story of deliverance. deliverance. That God gave them instructions on how they'll be delivered to get into their promised land. If you thought for what you, you for the basis of your faith, if it be your promised land, then be willing to heed to the leading of the Spirit on how he's going to get you there. Some people believe in God for things, but their lives are still in a mess. You're living in sin. Living in sin is different from sinning. True. It's a difference between sin and iniquity. There's a place where sin has become a lifestyle to a man. Yeah. Now, if you're walking in sin as a lifestyle, how are you trying to receive from God? Deuteronomy, I think, 29, tells the children, God tells the children of Israel that if you do these things, and he speaks of the blessing that will come to them. And he says if you do these things, it talks about the, the calamity curse. that would come to yeah. them. Now, 
I don't, I don't speak of a faith of a people that are not walking upright with God. It wouldn't make sense. Yes. It wouldn't make yes. sense. My journey of trusting God always was seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. If at all I find myself there are things out of order in my life, I ask myself, Felix, is your life upright? Search, search my, your life and see if there's anything amiss. Is there someone you've refused to forgive? Is there someone you've dealt with unjustly? Mm. Because for what I believe in God, I know God is able to do exceedingly. But if I leave certain open things in my life, the devil can use them to hit me. Slight interjection, and please don't lose your train of thought. And sometimes, even we, when we may not be alive yeah. to the things that are wrong, yeah. some things are obviously wrong, yeah. but there's some that are very subtle that yeah. we don't even notice. Yeah. God is so vested yeah. in our deliverance yeah. that he shall reveal. Yes. He shall reveal that pride that you didn't even know existed. I know for a fact that when he set me on the course, <laughs> early 2021, yeah. 2020, 2020 and 21, yeah. that is when I earnestly, keyword being honestly and honestly, made a decision by his grace that I want to start living right yeah. and walking right. Yeah. And he set me on the course to deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. And my deliverance started in some areas where I yeah. still, yeah. My deliverance started then. And I, there were moments in my life where I felt, of course, one of the things that was revealed to me so obviously was pride. Yeah. And I started seeing change in my life. Yeah. And I got to a point where I thought pride has been sorted. Next, I had yeah. make a list of things that we're looking at. We're looking at. Yeah. So you can imagine my shock when one fine day, I think I did something, I don't remember what it was, yeah. and I was reminded that this is also pride. This is yeah. like one of the most subtle forms of pride yeah. and that needed to be dealt with as well. Yeah. So that is how vested God, how much how vested God is in our righteousness. Yeah. He it was so vested that he gave Christ yeah. as a bare minimum, beginning point. Yeah. If he did not withhold his own son yeah. for our sake, yeah. How much more is he going to walk this journey yeah. with us if we truly and earnestly seek and desire? Yeah. It is in his interest. Yeah. It, is in our, it should be in our interest yeah. because he has already demonstrated how important yeah. it is to him and he will constantly be speaking yeah. as long yeah. as we allow ourselves to, yeah. to hear. Sorry. And uh, this also brings me to the reason why we separated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Around the time when we were dating, I uh, think about how many months in? I think we did it for about, what, maybe four months? Yeah, so it's around there. Mm, around four months. I was traveling to Boston. And uh, I had purpose that this time when I go to Boston, I'll find time to go visit New York. And uh, I remember having a friend who I knew lived in New York. So, like, okay, he could accommodate me for. The weekend while I'm in New York. Mm. And as I was getting ready at home, I remember one time being in the bathroom and I just heard this word, Texas. I'm like, Texas? What do I name? Who do I name Texas? And they're like, oh, I know it's Bishop T.D. Jakes. <laughs> I, 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 I know what? We shall deal with that when we get to it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I WhatsApp my friend. The one who was supposed to be living in New York, yes, was living I, in New York. Yes, and I tell him, hey, what's up? I've been in New York in two weeks. There's nothing if you can host me. And he's like, ah, oh, Felix would have been glad, but unfortunately we moved to Texas. Wow. I was like, oh. That's why Texas. <laughs> Wait a minute. And when I got that confirmation, you know, I never take things for granted. Yeah. That repetition, that repetition, I don't believe in so much in coincidence. Those repetitions, there is something there. I purposed, I'm going to Texas. Regardless of what the cost is, I'm, I'm going, going to, Texas. to Texas. 
So I go to Boston and then I bought a ticket with Southwest Airlines uh, to Texas. So I went, and then on Sunday, I think I went Friday or Saturday. Then on Sunday, uh, actually I felt because Bishop T.D. Jakes, like I have to go to Bishop T.D. Jakes Church, the Porter's house. So my friend on Sunday, we drove to the Porter's house. And I think we got the, like the second or the third row. Wow. And I remember going to the Porter's house. What blew my mind, there was a parking lot on one side of the road. But there was a flyover across the highway to the main church. I remember seeing the grandness of the house of prayer. And I'm like, these people, this, this is how much God, how big God is to these people. You, you haven't seen such grandness on things of God in this land. Mm, not yet. I go to this church. Huge, powerful. Then I hear Bishop T.D. Jake start to preach. And I remember in that moment, a rebuke. Mm. Felix, get your life in order. I knew that, that the inheritance that is due me cannot come when I'm not upright. Yeah. And at that time, I used to come at my place and spend the night and it seemed okay. Yeah. I go to the porter's house and I, they make an altar call. I went back to commit my life to Christ. And they prayed for me. And when I walked out of the porter house that day, I was like, Felix, there is a God you've always known that you are willing to die for. Go commit that to him, to him without reservation. Take out, don't allow anything that are not of God in your life. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. I think Luganda says it best, and yes. I learned this word more recently, like in 2021. Yes. I was like, Felix, take away all compromises. And I remember when I came back and I told you, I don't think we should do this. It wasn't because I hated you. It wasn't because I didn't think you were a good woman, but I was like, this foundation is wrong. This is not the God way. And even after that happened, we remained friends. Now, this is the interesting part. Yes. When you were going, obviously I wasn't, I can't say I was spiritual then. Yeah. I was actually just trying to find my way back to God because yeah. I'd been lost yeah. for so many years. Yeah. I was really, really trying to find my way back to God. And I believe that it's that God in you yeah. That actually drew me to you then. Mm. It was mm. my lifeline. Yeah. But I remember distinctly the time when you were leaving. Yeah. I felt in my spirit yeah. that when you come back, yeah. things are going to be different. Yeah. Yeah. And I cried. Yeah. I remember I had, we had agreed. I don't know if we had agreed or maybe I just wanted to stick around anything close to you. I decided I was going to keep your, your apartment until you come back or something <laughs> yes. like that. I remember that night I cried like a yeah. part of me was dying. And true to form, a part of me died. Yeah. The part that should never have been there. Yeah. But I was so sure that when you come back, yeah. things are not going to be the yeah. same. So when you came back and we started having, we had that what I call come to Jesus conversations, yeah. <laughs> the ones where there's no, there's no joking. I knew, okay, so this was it. Yeah. This, this was actually it. But I felt rested in, while I cried, obviously, because there's a carnal side to me, yeah. human being, at that point, I was like, oh, in my mind, I was like, but if we're not together, then I don't have this relationship. Yeah. You know, it was, it was a breakup. Yeah. But it didn't really, really feel like a major breakup. Yeah. And I think because of the reason that we were separated, yeah. we were actually able to remain friends. Mm. And we were able to build a far better, yeah. more yeah. honorable yeah. and beautiful 
relationship. Yeah. 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 And uh, I've noticed a pattern in my life that every time I stand in a place of considering what may come to me from God, mm. every time it, the conviction I receive is to put my life in order. In order. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all that things will be added unto you. For me, that's like a life motto. For wherever I want to go, wherever I want to achieve, the litmus test is there is one way. And I've never seen myself walking upright with God and life has not yielded to me. Because his word is true. He's not no, a man that he should lie. Never have I yielded to God and life has not yielded to me. And every time I find myself life going certain place, it's usually it. something. In the story of, uh, um, in the book of Joshua, um, when Joshua was leading the children of Israel to conquer the different cities, there's a, a city they, want, they were going to conquer. It was so weak, so they didn't even send their best men. They sent and a the few men, <laughs> and they were utterly destroyed. Mm -hmm. And Joshua was sad. He ripped his clothes. Hey God, what happened? And God told him, I told you guys when you conquered the other city to not, to take, not take any anything. of the accursed things. But one among you, some among you took certain things. And they figured out who had done so. They destroyed those people. And they went and took that city. You see, a lot of Christians think, just because I am born again, I'm going to go and take cities. Taking cities requires power. It is the power of God. When you go in a healing ministry, in a point of healing, the pastor doesn't just enter, go to the pulpit and start healing because he's not the one that heals. He's simply a vessel. It's the power of God that comes upon him. That healing may happen. That if in, even us, children of God, if you want to conquer, but you need to understand, you know, the Holy Spirit is called the Holy Spirit, but I don't think we internalize the holy part of it. <laughs> okay. Holy. You, you don't, don't get it. Holy. Uh, you don't get it. You see, you are the English person. You can have a man. Then you can say a rich man, a poor man, handsome man. There's that word that describes this man. That's, the descriptor. That differentiates him mm. from all the others. Mm. So they are spirits, but there's this spirit here. It's the Holy Spirit. There are no Holy Spirits. There's only one. The Holy, Holy spirit. spirit. And that is the spirit of power. Now, don't think you're going to overcome without the power of God. And I, I tell you, the Holy Spirit is holy. I once had a story, I haven't confirmed it, that if the Kabaka is supposed to go to visit a certain family and he hears there was a misunderstanding in that family, he doesn't go. I haven't confirmed it, but it intrigued me when I heard it, that a carnal man with majesty can fail to go to a place because think the house is not in order. How much more? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Now one may say, but it's in us. That's actually what I was going yes. to say, that there's, there's, there's some, a bit of confusion, I'll call it confusion around the spirit that we receive. The spirit within. The spirit within that we receive. And the spirit receive. upon. 
Yes, the one yes. within is the one we receive when we yes. come to the knowledge of Christ, when yes. we get born again. Yes. But the spirit upon... Spirit of power. That is the spirit of power yes. that just yes. comes. That's why some people go and pray for the sick and they remain sick. That's why people, some people speak to mountains and they don't move. So some people speak to storms and they continue. So the spirit within is the spirit that that's the one that convicts us, that yes. helps us change, yes. that helps us walk yes. rightly before yes. God. But yes. when it comes to yes. miracles, signs, wonders, doing for all these ministry, things for ministry, it's the power, the power yes. that comes with the spirit, the spirit, the spirit upon. upon, and that power is the power I know that breaks chains. There's a price to that power. There's a cost. It costs you everything. You can't just be... The other name for it is the anointing. The anointing. You can't just be there enjoying your life. (laughs) And for a man that is anointed, you know, you need to understand what happens when God's hand goes off you? Saul in the Bible disobeyed God. And God, Namvak, and God raised David. David. And Saul tried to kill David because he knew that it had been taken from him and placed to. Another he, place. But he should have known that there is no way he was going to be able to kill David. No, you see, you underestimate carnality. <laughs> because common sense dictates there is no way you're going to kill the man who has anointed. not against flesh and blood. True. <laughs> you get? Now, but now you need to understand David to understand the discipline. Mm. As Saul is hunting David, Saul goes to a cave to ease himself. And David and his men were inside there. And David's men tell him, God has brought him into your hands. Deal him. And David's like, no, I cannot touch the Lord's anointed. Which is interesting. David was a special man. He knew him he was an anointed man. But the throne had been taken from him. God can take a throne from you while you're still seated in it. As I still Uganda thing, but it may startle the brethren. <laughs> yes. Okay, it's the saying. By now, Bugonga Luvali Mubi. Yes. Mm. Now, I don't promote Luvali, but the idea is the idea of the form and the spirit, right? That you can have a thing without the other power. Yes, you can have a throne without the power of the throne. The throne. Spirit upon, spirit within, spirit upon the need for us to actually recognize that when Jesus said, greater things than these shall you do. Yeah. Yeah. He knew what he was talking about. Stop for a second. Go on. No, 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 no. I, was, I, was, I believe I was led there so that you could find yourself. Ah, yeah. Yes. So... Take it. so. What's interesting, Jesus says, greater things you'll do. How many Christians can bear witness that they're doing greater things than Jesus? Your child falls sick, the first thing you run to a hospital, you can't even lay hands. You wake up and you have no money, you can't even speak to the money to show. So where is the failure? If he said greater things you shall do, why aren't you doing greater things? The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But can you tell me that when you look in this nation and you look at greatness, all you see is of Christians, believers? No. When the young people are looking for idols, people to inspire them, are they looking at the believers? Maybe a handful. Jesus was followed by multitudes. Thousands followed him. Thousands followed him. That 
is the power of God. That is the power of God. You see, when someone sings, stand still and know that he is God, there's no need to fight, for the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. The idea of a Christian is not my power that does things. It is the power of God. And all I need to do is to do everything that the power of God may repay upon me. For as long as the power of God is upon me, nothing, nothing can get in the way. This is a pattern. I've seen this pattern in the Bible. I've seen this pattern in my life. That's why I cannot even be drawn by a beautiful woman into adultery. <laughs> why? It's too expensive. It's too heavy a price to pay. No woman is that beautiful except my wife. <laughs> I was waiting for you. <laughs> Nothing, no business deal is big enough for me to corrupt myself. Even if you come and say there's a billion shillings here, just have to lie that we're going to do this now. I don't do shady things. If I'm broke, if I'm alone, everyone has left me. But God is still present. Oh, I am persuaded I'll do well. The state of the vessel is important. And you know it's very possible and very easy for the rest of, for you to hide your indiscretion, indis okay. I don't remember the English word. <laughs> it's very easy for you to deceive the world. They can see you and see a man or a woman that's a certain way because You've mastered the art of saying the right things, looking the right way, possibly walking with your head a little bit like this, so you say you're a humble person, yeah. but God cannot be deceived. Yeah. He searches the hearts of men. He really, really searches the hearts of men. And when he searches the hearts of men, he will reveal these things to us. Sometimes we're stubborn. Sometimes we do not hear. Sometimes we hear and we ignore. But he's constantly in that business. And he doesn't stop. He's, he's unrelenting. And I say that because, because I know I've been there. I remember, you know when he, he sort of, When we broke up, it was very clear why we were breaking up. Yeah. So I can't even feign ignorance. I knew why we were breaking up. And then we break up and suddenly I, I start thinking about other human beings. Mm. You know, mm. but the, the principle was the principle. Yeah. God wanted to put my life right. Yeah. But I didn't allow that to happen immediately. Mm. He's got a lot of time, eh? Yeah. He's, he, will, he will give you supplementaries yeah. Yeah. until you actually learn the lesson. Yeah. He is not, he's not going anywhere. He, yeah. he was here before time began. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to be here. So he's not in a rush. Yeah. We're the ones who delay. Yeah. We delay our progress. We delay where he's taking us to. We delay the deliverance yeah. because we do not understand the urgency yeah. within which we need to heed his guidance. Yeah. There is so much that God wants to do in us and through us for the kingdom and for yeah. other people. But we're the ones who stand in our own way. Yeah. Yeah. When God says, 
Rukshana, this is wrong. Yeah. This is not pleasing in yeah. my sight. Stop it. Yeah. Or change, or don't do this, or whatever it is. And you keep doing it. Yeah. He's not going to strive with you. You're lucky, actually, if the Holy Spirit sticks around. Actually, someone said something powerful. Mm. You grieve. You actually the grieve Holy the Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's where I was going. You grieve the Holy Spirit. And there comes a time, and this goes back to where we started from, which was hearing. Yeah. There comes a time when you will not hear. Mm. You will mm. not be able to hear. Yeah. You, and then you'll keep wondering, why are things going south? But you blocked the channel. You cannot hear when the Holy Spirit speaks because he's not there anymore. And that is where you need to get to a place of brokenness and repentance. And it's not repentance is not what we say with our lips. It's the state of our hearts. And God knows when your spirit, when your heart is broken and repentant. He knows. And there's a lady that comes to mind. There's a lady whose story in this land has fascinated me and I've meditated on. She came up with gospel songs that transcended denomination. She spoke about the blood of Jesus and it was played in the most unexpected of places. Yeah. Her music had such a power in it. To this day when I listen to her music, I feel the power therein. I don't know her origin, but I know the moment she did that music, she was in such a place. In a certain place. She was in such a place that she had a connection to power. It is not simple that one does a song. It's not just mere promotion. Uh -uh. You can promote a song and people hear it, but it doesn't stick in their hearts. It's another to have a tune that sticks in the hearts of men. It's not to have a tune that heals men. And she did songs, songs back to back, all filled with power. But I remember the time when she was caught up in a scandal. A scandal that was seemed to have been orchestrated by the realm of darkness to discredit her. Yeah. See, you can be anointed, but if you're discredited, it's another. And that scares me. Mm. That scares me. But of course, also I felt a sadness that how <sighs> is it we neglect our stars? How many of us have honestly take enough time to stand with that lady who blessed the land. Because the, suck, the level she went to, the battle she was fighting, what to a level above average. And that is the nature of the power of God. So it's okay for God to lift you. But do you know what comes with lifting? Do you know the cross of the lifted? They say new levels, new devils. And yes, I was trying to remember what I had seen in that story. And something I saw is they silenced her. In the end, they silenced her. She had the land. She ministered to the land. Her voice was a power. 
effortlessly. Mm. I saw some of our old videos in church performing and you see a woman broken before God in worship. But when the success showed up, I don't know how they conjured up. But what happened? They silenced her. But not for long. Yes. And such things keep me very alert. That this platform, that this altar, we do not become familiar with. Because if we let in the accursed things, how can we stand? The voices that listen can stop listening. Never take for granted that you can speak and people listen. Many musicians sing some of the best in their music schools. But you start to realize not just about the music. It is the what power. The, what the music carries. Yes. The power they are in. It's not just about the podcast. It's what the podcast carries. For as long as that is lost, even to have one vessel to listen to completion, may be impossible. Thank you more.